Hey, I'm Matt with Meat Church. Let's make bourbon baby back ribs. Welcome to our annual Hardcore Barbecue Series. This is the first episode of the 2023 edition. If you've never checked out this playlist on our YouTube channel, we started it in 2021, did it again in 2022. And basically it's, you know, coming into National Barbecue Month. And this playlist is where we put all of what I call the classics, brisket, beef rib, chicken, you name it, it's in there. So check out that playlist. We'll put a card up here for that. Basically it's got all things Hardcore Barbecue. Today we're doing bourbon baby back ribs. Now we've done lots of ribs on this channel before, but this is kind of unique because we're going to smoke with bourbon barrel staves and uh, we're gonna make a bourbon barbecue sauce uh, that we're gonna glaze with uh, and it's gonna be super delicious because I made these this week and they're great. So what we've got here jumping right in, baby back ribs, AKA loin back ribs. Uh, you know, I kind of grew up eating these. I grew up in the South, I say that a lot, but this is, I always say that Chili's uh, taught you that you need to like baby back ribs. But um, I've cooked these at Memphis in May before, a final, that's a world championship, so kind of think we know what we're doing. Uh, at least my family says I do. Actually, they don't all that much. But let's jump right in. This is gonna be very straightforward, very easy. We're just gonna do a couple things to get these on the smoker, then we're gonna make a sauce, and we're gonna try it. So we're gonna start out with a slather. It's getting warm, so fly season is upon us. Also lawnmower season. I'm sure y'all can hear the lawnmower across the street. Actually, I can't slather yet. I gotta peel the membrane. I like to peel the membrane off the back ribs and I just do the paper towel method. Grab the end. I haven't done this in a while, so I figured, you know, I haven't done this in a video. All you do, for me, paper towel, grab the end of it, lift it up. Super easy. I prefer to peel the membrane because I like to season the backside and let it penetrate better. Also, I don't personally love the bite of ribs without the membrane pulled. Now, I got a lot of buddies that own very reputable barbecue joints that don't pull the membrane. If you're going to cook them hot enough, it's not a big deal. So don't think that you have to do it. It's kind of a preference thing and it's something that I like to do. So I like to slather with mustard first. I'm going to start on the bone side. And we're in Texas, so by God, we're gonna use what a burger mustard. A binder's just a way for seasoning to adhere, but not just adhere, but also help the rub uh, stay on the meat during the cook. Um, if you've been a fan of this channel for a long time, I do say they're optional. You don't have to do this, and if you do it, you don't have to use mustard. You can use oil, but this is a method that works and you know is extremely common on pork, so that's why I do it. Okay, I'm gonna season on the bone side first because I'm gonna cook meat side up. So I usually start back here. By the way, these were Prairie Fresh baby back ribs. I picked these up at my local Walmart. Uh, this was like just under 13 bucks for this rack, so super affordable. Today, I'm gonna use my OG all-purpose rub. Um, this is the gospel. I call it the best color in barbecue. I, when I developed this rub, I had just taken a Travis Clark barbecue class in Oklahoma. Travis is a world champion, good friend of mine, and he made a comment in the class that it's always good to have a really bright rub in your arsenal for comp cooks so that you can repair things and things like that. But you eat your eyes first in a bright red color. I love, so that's, uh, that's where this came from. And I'm just going to kind of pat this in with my hand. And while I'm doing that, if you guys have not noticed, uh, at the end of our videos for at least six weeks now, we've been doing a wrap up. So when this video ends, just when you think it's over, stick around. What we do is we watch the edit and we come back days later and we shoot a wrap up where it's a casual take on, um, you know, how I thought the cook went. It gives me a chance to add anything that I might've missed. Um, you know, reflect on like a lot of times we have food that comes from these that my family eats. And, you know, if I get that very rare Mrs. Meat Church compliment, I'm gonna be sure to tell you about it in the wrap up. You guys have been asking for her to show up in the comments. So we'll see if she makes a cameo soon or not. But stick around the end of the video and watch the wrap up. Y'all have been saying that you love it. So I season pretty heavy when I'm just using one rub. You're not gonna hurt these ribs and I'm just gonna kind of pat it on. But I always say season with what you like. Whatever your favorite rub is, go for it. Our rubs are 
uh, made their small batch. Uh, if you're ordering from us from our website, then they've been in a bottle just a few days when we send them out. They are the freshest rubs on the planet. Okay, we're gonna let this sit here, which I'm gonna let it sit 15 minutes before we cook them. So I'll see you guys back here in about 15 minutes. Clearly this is completely adhered. Uh, when, when meat is really wet like this, the, the seasoning and the salt in it has pulled the moisture out. And I wasn't lying about the best color in barbecue. These are bright red, so I absolutely love this on ribs. So let's talk about cooking. Today I'm running a mill scale offset. I mentioned I'm running barrel stave fire. So obviously they're oak barrels. Uh, it smells really good, by the way. You can totally smell the sweetness. So really, really good. You know, I always talk about how you can change temperatures. You could cook lower 225, you could cook higher if you want. 275 is a temperature that I can get ribs done kind of quicker than most people and still not lose any quality. Uh, so that's what, we're, that's what we're doing here today. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw these in. And by the way, you can replicate this on any type of cooker that you have. I'm just rolling with uh, my offset today. We got a lot of people to feed today, so we got a lot of ribs rolling right now. In we go. And I'm gonna bring some out that have been cooking. So I've got some to speed things up that have been cooking right at two hours, just a little over. All right, so here's what we're looking for. A beautiful, get that out of the way, beautiful red mahogany color. You wrap for two reasons in my opinion. You wrap to protect that color uh, when you don't want the ribs to get any more smoke, which I'm gonna keep showing these to y'all. Uh, and then if you wanna put any goodness in the wrap, this is how you do it. Now we have a no wrap rib video on this channel. I'm a big fan of that as well, but lots of ways to skin a cat uh, when it comes to barbecue. So this one, uh, we're trying to make a sweeter rib, so we're gonna put some stuff in it. And we're gonna be really, really simple with this. What we're gonna do is just put down some pats of a really good butter. So this is Flugra unsalted butter. Uh, you can use salted if you want, but I put a lot of seasoning on it, so you know I don't know that we need any more salt on it. And then I'm gonna use a little agave. So this is my sweetener. Some people use honey. Um, I actually prefer to use agave. I just make a little bed here. And then I'm gonna use just a little bit of brown sugar, not a whole lot. So a little tip, if you make ribs and they end up not being really pretty at the end, they're too dark, you did a couple things. You could have um, burned like honey brown sugar, you could have cooked them too long, too hot, so you kinda gotta watch it, obviously. So I'm gonna go meat down and we're gonna wrap these up. It's gonna be super simple. And back in the smoker we go. And at this point, what we're gonna do is we're gonna cook them until they're tender. So everyone by now should have an instant read thermometer. This is how you nail the desired doneness of anything that you're cooking. And we're gonna be probing this along the way. This next stage is probably only gonna take about an hour and a half at this point. Um, I'm going to be probing right in between the bones, and when there's no resistance, I'm good. So just over 200 degrees is what I'm looking for. That's my preference. But I'm going to put these back in the smoker, and then we need to make barbecue sauce. Let's make our bourbon barbecue sauce, and this one is delicious. So we've got an induction burner here. We've got a Heston pot on it. We're just going to cut this on to medium heat. And this sauce is really easy to make. It's really similar to our Dr. Pepper barbecue sauce, couple changes. Um, so we start out with two cups of ketchup. I've had comments about that a little bit. Um, you can use crushed tomatoes if you, um, if you don't like this, but this is fine and extremely common. One tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. And I am gonna plug a friend shamelessly. If you guys haven't tried the W sauce, let me tell you something. That's one of my favorite just condiments in the world. Marinate chicken thighs in it and grill it, unbelievable. It's just more complex than regular Worcestershire sauce, but use whatever you want. One cup of brown sugar. I'm gonna go teaspoon of black pepper uh, because I like a little bit of, of a peppery bite. And I'm, I'm sorry, that's a tablespoon. 
and then also a tablespoon of holy cow. And I'm not gonna measure this, but that's because I'm a seasoning pro and I know precisely how much is one tablespoon. Lastly, it can't be bourbon barbecue sauce without a little good brown water. Yeah, I drank that before I poured it in, but guess what? This is for me, not a restaurant, we're good. Six ounces. So what am I using today? I'm using Elijah Craig. Um, I like this, it's 94 proof. It's uh, actually a Bourbon Pursuit pick. If you guys love bourbon, you should check out the Bourbon Pursuit podcast. It's the biggest podcast in bourbon. But I think this will work great in this sauce. I know it works great because I've made it. But it is sweet. Um, you know, it's got some floral notes to it, but it's also got a little bit of spice to it. My friend actually kind of described it to me as like maybe picking up like notes of like a Heath bar, which I'm a big fan of. So it's gonna work really good in here. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna increase the temp a little bit. I don't want to boil it. I want to bring it just to a simmer. And I'm going to simmer it for about 30 minutes. Let it thicken up. And then after that's done, we ought to be getting pretty close to saucing our ribs. All right, the sauce has come together. It's, uh, it's simmered for half an hour, and it's just kind of hanging out here warm. Uh, so now we're going to get the ribs, and we're going to glaze them. So we got a couple racks here that took about an, about an hour and a half more um, to get to where we want them to be. And time is not important. You need to be looking at feel and temperature. So between the bones, I'm at 203. And they, the thing is they feel tender, so don't even look at the number, just feel it. And then that's how you know they're done. Um, I don't like my bones fall, I don't like my ribs fall off the bone, so around 203 is, is good for me. But what I like to do is create a little boat with the foil here so that I can apply my sauce and then just set these back in the pit and not get a bunch of sauce all in my pit. And depending what type of sauce you use, which by the way, this is just something that I like. You don't have to do, if you're following this, you don't have to do the bourbon sauce. Um, just do whatever sauce you want. The method that I'm teaching you works for any, any type of flavor profile. But what I wanna do is I want to apply this sauce and then just put it back in the pit for just a few minutes so that the, the sauce tacks up so that when you bite a rib, you don't have the sauce running down your face. All right, easy from here. Pit is at the same temp. We're just going back in. The sauce should be set, so let's get the ribs. Looking beautiful. All right, well obviously these are gonna be hot. I'm gonna set them out here on the board. They had beautiful color from the, from the seasoning, but they, they look really good from this sauce as well. All right, I'm gonna let these cool off and then we'll see how we did. All right, I went ahead and cut myself a rib and you can see amazing smoke out here on the outside. I'm ready to jump into this. That's tender. Man, that's good. That's really good. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of our gospel all-purpose rub. It's great on all sorts of things. And, you know, one of the reasons I did it today is I haven't used it in a long time. And um, we call it all-purpose for a reason. So I'm a big fan of that. But I actually really like that barbecue sauce. Um, people ask for more sauces after the Dr. Pepper one. So I thought this would be a little bit different. And uh, if you know me, you know I love the brown water. So... Um, this was a really good compliment. Nice and, you know, kind of super saucy rib, like I said earlier, uh, which is kind of a nice change of pace to traditional Texas barbecue, which is kind of salt, pepper, and, and no sauce. So this kind of takes me back uh, 
um, to my upbringing. So I definitely love this and highly recommend you try it. Don't forget to check out the Hardcore Barbecue playlist. There's all the classics are in there. You guys will love it, for, so check out that playlist. Stick around for the wrap up later. I'll see y'all next time. Well, welcome to the wrap up. Uh, this is a spot where after the fact, in this case, two weeks after we shot this video, come back, reflect on the video, add any notes that we want to add and things like that. And you guys have been saying you love it, so we're going to keep doing them. So what do we have to add to this? Well, I wouldn't change anything about the recipe. Honestly, they were delicious. Uh, my crew loved them. My family loved them. So definitely think that you should make it. First thing I was going to bring up is a new tip on reheating barbecue. So Kirk, our cameraman, took a rack of ribs home. And if you ever have leftovers, my favorite way to reheat barbecue is via the sous vide method. So it's water circulation at a precise temperature, in this case, 165 degrees. Whether it's brisket ribs, whatever the case is, you can reheat to perfection and run no risk of drying anything out. So I highly recommend that. In this case, this is made with meat gear uh, and we're, we're huge fans of it. Let's talk a little bit of bourbon. You guys know that I'm a bourbon fan. If you have not checked out our what bourbons pair best with barbecue video that I did with my friend Ryan Cecil. He is the owner of Pursuit Spirits, co-owner I should say, also the co-host of the Bourbon Pursuit podcast, which is the largest podcast in bourbon. This was a uh, Pursuit pick. We actually talked about that. Uh, this Elijah Craig isn't just one off the shelf, but one that I got from Ryan and we used in that tasting. So you guys should check that video out. It's really cool. We pair with brisket, pulled pork, ribs, and sausage. And they were all bourbons that uh, you could find. So not some crazy baller bourbons that were unobtainable. And if you are a bourbon fan, thought I would uh, give a little mention to my favorite cocktail ever, which is a smoked old fashioned. I make my own pecan simple syrup. I'll put a recipe down in the description. But basically I do one part water, one part brown sugar half part pecans and I simmer that for 60 to 90 minutes, reduce it down and that's what this is. Um, you always got to have Luxardo cherries. These are actually the pecans that come out of it. I keep those and I put them in a jar and they're kind of like candied, super good. And a tip that Ryan gave me on your old fashions, instead of just using Angostura bitters, uh, two dashes of that and a dash of black walnut bitters. He called it a game changer and I can't disagree. Anyway, thanks for watching. Cheers y'all.